All right, let's talk Thursday night football and get it started with tonight's game between the Colts and the Broncos. I mean, this game is like the battle of the teams without the with their with running back injuries. You know, Jonathan Taylor's out. Javante Williams went down last week. Uh, both of these offenses, I mean, it, the passing Perfect games, setting. yeah, it's been it's been a struggle. Um, I, I I feel like the right play. Uh, by the way, the Colts are three and a half point dogs on FanDuel. The total is forty two and a half. But I do feel like the Broncos can, you know, have some matchup advantages in the sense that, like, in theory, their passing game should be better. Like, they have the better quarterback. They have the better receivers. Uh, it, it hasn't exactly turned out like that. But Matt Ryan, that Colts offensive line, I don't know what happened to the Colts offensive line. It's like, done. Yeah. It's just like they all, like, the guys that used to be good at football are not good at football anymore on, on that offensive line. So It's very like, bizarre. It, in that sense, I, I kind of feel like the Broncos have some some matchup advantages. I mean, they have they still have a but then they don't have Gregory. Gregory's yeah. out though. Yeah, uh, uh, thirty pressures. I think I have it written down. I think he's no nineteen pressures. He was top five uh, in pressures, uh, even though he only had a couple of sacks. So that is big. But I like I like the fact that they can put Sertan on, on Pittman. Yeah, uh, shout Darby's out him. Well. No tail. Yeah. So yeah, even if even if Darby wasn't playing well. You you shadow, you shadow Pittman with Sertan, who's arguably PS two as he as some refer him to, is one, arguably one of the best corners of the game. No Taylor, offensive line bad. Matt Ryan is throwing the ball like what, what's his average depth of target like four yards? Like he's, there's no time he's he's not throwing the ball deep at all. So if you take away Pittman, which Ryan and the offensive line have basically taken him out already, but and there's no Taylor and the offensive line has already taken. I, I just don't know how the Colts are really going to move the ball here. It'll help that there's no Gregory. Um, but the Broncos will get pressure. The past, he's been mm-hmm. really good. And on the, on the other side, it just comes down to, okay, what is, you know, there's no Javante Williams. Are they going to put Melvin Gordon out there? Like, is, is he just going to fumble the game? Why? So that's a wild card. We'll see. Um, I'm, I'm assuming they're going to have a committee, but you it's when is Russ going to kind of break out of this? And look, you're playing, there's no Shaq, Shaq Leonard's out again. Again, again. Uh, he played like eight snaps and got hurt. And DeForest Buckner was limited last week. So we'll see how much he can go in a short week. And, you know, so it's, but what, what will Russ do? So in a way, I'm curious to see, okay, there's no Javante Williams. You don't have as much confidence in the explosiveness of your backfield. And do you let kind of Russ, you know, what we've been arguing for what they should have been doing in Seattle, which they are doing now, let Russ try to run around and create more and be himself instead of like in this box that he's obviously not thriving in. So that that's a big wild card here. But I will say, we talked about this earlier, right before we went on to record. We, we mentioned the Dolphins last week and the, the play that ended the game was Bridgewater came in and then him and a receiver had a miscommunication. And, um, you know, I, I, I also tweeted this out. I said, that's, that's short week backup quarterback in. And you just can't you can't run that route. By the way, I don't think it was a pick though. They didn't they didn't they didn't review it. Um, I think it might have skimmed the. Now ground. he got he got under. I, I I watched it. I think he got under it. Uh, Did he? He threw it right to him. It was just it it was so it looked like he dropped it, but he actually just it was so directly to him that he, it just like the ball caught him essentially from what I saw. But yeah. So but regardless, the that's the kind of like a just maybe something that happens with a rookie mm-hmm. head coach and. Historically, rookie head coaches, which we have here with the Broncos, um, have not fared well on Thursday Night Football, which makes sense. It's short prep. It's something you're not used to. You got to do a game plan quickly. And if you're going up against a veteran coach like Reich, maybe you're at a disadvantage. They're 8-16-1 over the past 25 games on Thursday Night Football against the spread. So... Yeah, I mean, you're going to altitude on the short. There's, I could make a case for every uh, every side here. So you know what I'm doing? I'm gonna look to see, pull up the Action Network app, and I am going to see what you or my guy Sean Kerner, that's on a prop, and I'm gonna bet a Thursday night player prop. That will be my action in this game because uh, I want no part. It's ugly. Iowa versus the Colts. By the way, uh, we should shout out. 
uh, our guy Kerner uh, was number one in the week four fantasy accuracy. So he's up to six uh, for the year and I'm at two. So we got two Action Network uh, employees in the top six. So uh, hopefully we can keep it up. But shout out to Kerner. That was a very sly way of uh, announcing that you're second. I like it. Oh, I mean, I was second. I was second last week. I actually had a, a pretty like middling week. I was like 60th this week. But, you know, the weed I had, I guess it just kept me there. No, but I just like the way you went about it. Like, you got to <laughs> shout out Kerner, who's six. <laughs> now we have two of the top six because I'm second. <laughs> it was very well mm. presented. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, you get practice at this kind of stuff after you host. Who, who was who? Who? Uh, who? Who? Like last week, who was your one or two that you were just like, oh my god, they they were just completely off of what I thought. Um, uh, I I had uh I had Mariota in the top ten. So, oh my God, what, that, that what kind was of that? I, mean, I think we both did, to be honest. It was just, he was playing, you know, he was it, rushing quarterbacks, you know, he was scoring fantasy points. He was in that, you know, the Browns were without all their, you had the over in that game. Like we all liked, we thought there was going to be more scoring in this game. Yeah, uh, I, I would bet that over again. <laughs> yeah. the, the worst part is the Browns go down the field, eight minute drive to start the game and turn it over on downs. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And then the, the Falcons go, it like six minute drive the other way and kick a field goal and it's three nothing like fifth, 16 minutes in I'm like you got to be kidding me and then it still almost got there and the Browns failed at the end but I saw a what happened to you there is yeah because of all the Browns guys were out um what's his what's the, the Falcons coach or Arthur Smith yeah he was did you see the clip of him in the very beginning of the first half I think I saw it on NFL uh, films don't think so what, what was he was he just he went to his assistant is uh one of his assistant coaches and he says um right in the beginning of the second half he says we're just going to run the we're just going to run this damn ball every single play and close this game out um oh and Jesus. so that obviously didn't help yeah uh, <sighs> you know, i think in our company fantasy like i started Mariota over like russell wilson um <laughs> i started and, him over uh, tom brady in some in a week <laughs> like i yeah i think it should happen you know yeah. shit happens but uh we digress uh yeah this game is ugly uh frank reich you mentioned reich you know might have a, a little advantage here over the rookie head coach although I don't, I don't know what advantage right I mean he seems like he ever since what was it that game against the Raiders I think last year that they blew uh it just seems like this coach team is flat uh you know luckily we got the cover against Kansas City because Kansas City gave it away but uh, I don't know if he still has it but he is 10 and 3 against the spread when he's catching more than a field goal uh, as a dog, 77%. So, and in that cover against Casey. So for what it's worth, uh, the Colts are probably the right side if you are going to bet it, but yeah, I think this is a, a play, player prop only game uh, for me as well. Let's jump. Oh, in. by the way, Colts unders nine straight unders by nine points per game on average. Um, hmm. If I had to bet this, it's a primetime game, short week without your bats. I would lean under here, but no Leonard. There's no Gregory, maybe Buckner's limited. And then I don't know if like, because there's no backs that you're going to see a higher frequency of passing and high and variance in that sense. So I would lean under, but I'm staying away. Yeah. That's, that's kind of what I'm worried about too. It's like, I, it seems like an under game, but you know, are these teams just going to come out and throw? I mean, you don't want to, I know they're not confident in Melvin Gordon. And on the other side, Naeem Hines is probably going to have to be your lead back. And then you're going to probably use Lindsay who, you know, hasn't been on an NFL roster in a while. So yeah, it's, it's a dicey one. 